Stream is starting soon. Stream is starting soon. I think I got everything. Pretty sure I do. Pretty sure I do. Let's see. What does this look like? What does the YouTubes look like from the other side? Who will join us for Easter Sunday? Considering this is completely off the random. We shall see. We shall see. All right, let's get my music playing off in the background now. I wonder if anyone's going to hear this music in the background. Oh, well. Start off nice and light for the volume today. Don't know what it's going to sound like. Because I did not test this beforehand. That's fine. Today we've got a special, special thing. It's been a little while since I've streamed. Let's see, it's been about, I don't know, maybe three weeks or so, I think. I don't know, it was like March 26th, I think my last stream was. So this is just coming out of the blue, just completely streaming by myself with no notice of anything. I think a lot of people are gonna be busy today, so just wanted to get this out there, get this done, and see uh, who's gonna participate after the fact of the stream. Ooh, what do we got ourselves here? We got ourselves the AJAZ AC081. I'm not gonna wait for anyone because I just want to build this. So. Sorry for whoever wanted to see this built from the very scratch live because this will only happen once. This wasn't packaged like this. I, I actually unpackaged it before uh, entering this video. What is this? There's like a little thingy on here. Oh, it's just like some residue from a sticker or something. Ugh. So the purpose of this live stream is because I don't really have time to do reviews right now. Life is getting more and more busy. Everyone's getting married. Everyone's having babies. So I got I got no time. No time to do anything else. No time whatsoever. So I wanted to get this out and hopefully have... A little bit of a review on the fly kind of thing here with this stream. So we'll see how that goes. Let's see if this music is. Okay. Yeah, music's, I think, on a good volume, actually. Music should be good. Shows how prepared I am. I am so prepared. Let me tell you right now. So I can't imagine too many things going wrong with the hot swap build. Um, just because I don't know why I have the worst luck with building keyboards for some reason. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Ooh. There we go. Got a little cable, a little key cap puller. What else we got here? Some extra key caps, a couple of uh, novelties it looks like. And uh, I think that's it. We got a couple of uh, gaskets here. So we got a gasket mounted keyboard here. We've got extra key caps. We've got a USB cable. Uh, I don't think this is uh, 
Well, actually, yeah, I think it's the six foot cable. So pretty standard issue, but nice to have nonetheless. And it doesn't, it's not just some black plastic cable. Manual right here. And uh, I think I think that's pretty much it for the contents of this. Uh, it's not wireless or anything like that. It's just like your standard issue DIY kit. So pretty pretty simple in terms of like its feature set, but because this thing right here, this Keek KRO81, this one's pretty. Uh, this thing is pretty loaded up to the brim with features, but it's not like that. It's definitely not like that. So it's a little bit different. Oh, baby. Oh, my goodness. We got some clicky switches today. Wow. That is, uh, that is horrific. But you know what? I, I guess that's interesting. These keycaps have a very interesting profile. They like, they sit really low on the first row right here and then they get really tall up top here and then they get lower up on the, the top row here. That is a very interesting keycap key cap profile. So I don't know what kind of keycap profile this is actually. This might be something proprietary to Ajaz or Akko or something like that. Something like that. So today we're pretty much just gonna go over what this is here. Um, and I think I'll make a separate video on this board, uh, just kind of highlighting what this will go over, just kind of like a quick format. But if anyone had questions about it, I wanted to answer it, like have like my first initials, my initial impressions on this board for today. So um, this is everything that's included right here, it should be all within frame. Extra gaskets, novelty keycaps, uh, keycap and switch puller and the manual. So this is kind of the first time I'm looking through the manual. Uh, so I don't know if this has screw and stabilizer support. I don't know if the PCB is north or south facing. I have no idea. So it's just kind of here for what it is. So um, before I take this apart, actually, I want to kind of walk myself around this board. Um, so if you see that the USB-C port is kind of off center, that's interesting. It's more towards the right of the board than it is towards the left. So I haven't seen that before. It's either center all the way to the right or all the way to the left. This one's just slightly <laughs> off center, uh, but that's fine. It's not, it's not going to bother me that much. I don't think the chamfered edges around the USB-C port are pretty nice. Um, all the edges are actually pretty clean on here. Ooh, new keyboard. Happy Easter. What's up, Josh? What's up, man? What's up, beautiful? Just stopping in to say happy Easter, y'all. Hope y'all are having a great weekend. Thanks, Austin. I hope you guys are having a beautiful Easter yourselves. Uh, hopefully you get to enjoy this nice day. I'm being extra lazy this weekend and not doing anything. So I was like, you know what? I should I should throw up this stream right now because I'm not doing anything right now. Um but I don't know if other people are not doing anything, but this is this is just kind of here for the sake of it. Boris, what's up, man? According to their website, those keycaps are JSA profile. Oh yeah, I think I've heard of JSA. So they have ASA and JSA, I believe. So these are slightly different from the ASA. They're both kind of tall keycaps, but the JSA ones have these really low first row uh, keycaps and lower uh, top row keycaps. Why do they not put the the middle USB-C port? Yeah, I don't know. It's just like it's like slightly off center, but I mean, hey, that's uh, <laughs> that doesn't really bother me too much, except for the fact that well, actually, I don't know. Let's see. How does it look with the cable going to it? So if the cable was going to this right here, would it look terrible? I don't know. Um. It doesn't look terrible, I don't think. It's a little off-centered, so it might bother me slightly. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's not just like directly in the center or just fully committed to going off to the right. Um, not a huge deal, I don't think. This thing, this thing's like $160, and you get a fully built keyboard, and it's all made out of CNC aluminum. 
So my complaints are limited. Awesome, man. Let me know when you want to run some Warzone sometime. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I haven't played in a minute, but I definitely want to play again sometime. I try to always catch people, but like to squad up with randos is, is pretty pretty common. So I, I want to squad up with uh, people that I know <laughs> when, I, when I do decide to go on. But yeah, let's do it, bro. Um, all right, so... This uh, this keyboard comes in at 160. Let me just double check here. Yep, 160 dollars, and so it's gasket mounted, and I believe it uses its own proprietary software. I think, or it doesn't use any. I I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's right. JSA profile. Yep, so Boris is right. JSA profile on these bad boys, and I could look through here if there is actually. Now, this does not mention anything about software. It just says using the default modes through the uh, FN key right here. Okay, so maybe there is no software. I don't know. Not too bad. Yeah, funny. I feel you, JD. Not bad for 160. Good deal. Yeah, it, I think I think this seems like a good deal. We'll break this down a little bit more, and we'll we'll see to the extent of it. Uh, have a good day. Thanks, Austin. You too, man. Enjoy your Easter, bro. Let's see how much flex we got in here. There's actually a decent amount of flex. I'm kind of surprised. I'm not going to lie. There's a good bit of flex in this uh, this board right here. I don't know if it's catching on stream, but maybe you can see the right around here, right around the edge of the uh, top of the, the case here and the bottom of the keycaps. are They're sinking in there. That's actually not bad. So the edges are pretty clean all around. I think Ajaz is underneath the umbrella of Akko and Epo Maker and all these guys. Um, so they they maybe have a lot of parts bin sharing or using at least the same machinery. So I think quality control, you can probably expect to be somewhere around the same region to have some sort of expectation. That's funny, I just bought the Epo Maker TH66, the one I sent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, yeah. So this might be underneath the same umbrella, Josh. I think it is, at least. You see the flex? All right, cool. So I'm glad you guys can see the flex on stream because sometimes I worry about how it actually looks like in camera if I'm getting the right angle. But if you guys can see it, that's good. Um, it's not a super interesting board. I mean, we've got a flat profile on the sides here. That's it's kind of what it looks like from the side. Um, so, I mean, it's not super interesting per se, but it feels well machined and the coating looks very uniform across all the different surfaces. And I don't see any scuffs or scrapes or anything like that uh, or any machine marks actually. So it looks really good. I mean, their, their process is probably really streamlined now that they have a whole bunch of uh, uh, boards coming out from underneath them. Kryptonic, what's up, my dude? I went on this journey to find the cheapest of cheapest 60% <laughs> keyboards with optical mechanical Gatorons, and I got the Tazari Pro, which is wireless Bluetooth and USB-C for... What? What? Bro, send that to me. I want to see that. Did you make a video on that? But flex on a much higher end board is kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, the the flex is is cool and this this is the hard thing to get for a cheaper keyboard is getting a good gasket mounting uh, type of board. So, I mean, take that with what you will. I mean, you know, we all have to make compromises at certain budgets, right? But anyways, when you plug in the board, you have this uh this little logo over here kind of lights up over here. Uh there's no caps lock button or a function button or anything or anything else really um i'm not a button i'm sorry led so the led is is static it's not going to change it's not going to change so this board came with some clicky switches um so i'm just going to prepare parry all for that yeah so that's that's kind of what it sounds like i'm not going to point the microphone directly to it because it would just be obnoxious but the, the problem with having clicky switches is like, do I even know if my keyboard sounds good? It's hard to tell over the clicking. I mean, I, I it's hard to tell what the stabilizers sound like. I don't even know if they sound good or not. 
I mean, I don't hear a ton of rattling because I hear more click than any rattle. So, I mean, maybe they are good, okay? Uh, we got this little badge in the top right-hand corner. It's a P symbol. Um, not sure what that has to do with the uh, board uh, per se, but I mean, it's a badge, so I guess that's cool. <laughs> we got a little badge in the corner. And in terms of quality on the badge, it looks pretty good. There's, there's like two little notches in the very edge of the badge and it'll be impossible to see on camera. But if you look up to it closely, I could see that. And that's probably the only deficiency in terms of the machining on this board that I can notice at least. I mean, this is probably one of the more intricate pieces, so I'm not gonna expect it to be super high quality anyways, but the badge is there for the sake of having a badge. Would you guys rather have a badge or would you rather have an extra key over there? I think I personally would take the extra key, but again, the badge helps differentiate it aesthetically from other boards. So, I mean, there's that. All these companies run their coupon sales. Yeah, exactly, in quotation marks. It usually just means 50% or more off. I just recently got three projectors for free. Oh my goodness. $100 projector with a $100 off coupon. What? That's like... Uh, Vipon, right? Wasn't that one of those sites where you just got a bunch of coupon codes? Everything had uh, MSRP, but that was uh, very suggestive at best. And then the coupon code is more like it's real price. But hey, getting projector for free, um, that, that sounds like an actual deal. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you can top that. Where they pay you money, maybe? I don't know. So, uh, looking at the bottom of the board here, we already have the case feet pre-installed. I mean, everything's already pre-installed on this board. And it looks like we've got four screws going from the top to the bottom, nothing on the sides here. Uh, we got the AJAZ engraving on the bottom here. It looks good, um, looks pretty smooth. Don't see any uh, jagged edges or anything like that. Uh, I like the little white accents for the feet. I think that's a nice touch. Granted, you're not really gonna see it. it's on the bottom. Same thing for the badge, but um, it's not super interesting, but it doesn't have to be. It's $160, so for that, I give them props for doing something, I guess. Yeah, Vipon, but these deals are hidden. I just have to, I just have to time them and find them. Oh, I see. Okay, I got three friends, and my family got many. Oh, you, I'm sorry. I got three, and friends uh, and family got many. Okay. Let's just say they lost money that day. Okay, so you just have to be like scouring for those deals pretty much is what you're saying. I gotta scour for them deals. What do you guys think about these keycaps? What do you guys think of the, the colorway per se? And then I think it matches pretty nice with this board. I, I, I really enjoy how uniform this board looks uh, without just going with like straight up white or black keycaps or something uh, pretty trivial like that. So I do appreciate that. Huh. This uh, keycap puller is a little too wide to to get this <laughs> escape key out. That's unfortunate. How, how am I supposed to do this? I could do these maybe. Yeah, I could do those, but I can't do the escape key. Pre-built kits for keyboards are definitely good. I love the keycaps. Yeah, yeah, me too. And let's look at these keycaps for quality, actually. So these are double shot. Oh, wow. Okay, these are actually double shot. I don't know if you guys will pick that up on there, but you can see there is gray on the inside here, which is casted for the F1 legend right there. And to look at the legends up close, they're a little different. Uh, so, it's interesting, you got the big letters over here and then the modifiers, like the shift key and caps over here are in lower case, which is pretty interesting. Uh, these key caps definitely have like a unique look to them, kind of blending uh, the old school SA style here, especially with the profile, the tall key cap profile, and then the big lettering. And then you got lowercase letters over here that kind of just make it a little bit different. I don't know, I think that's pretty interesting. I can't use regular keycaps. No way. Everything has to be extra now. Sebastian, what's up, man? 
Hey JD, what's up everybody? Just wanted to say hi. I cannot stay, but we'll watch this later tonight. Hey man, thanks for being here. Thanks for stopping. I, I, I assume this would be a rough time of day to grab people's attention because it's Easter Sunday if, if y'all are celebrating that. But um, I just wanted to get the stream out there uh, just for people to have something to watch maybe later tonight when they're going and coasting off the, the high of Easter Sunday. So something to relax to perhaps later on. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like to look at these keycaps. I think they're very uniform. The legends are actually really decent and I'm surprised at the quality of these keycaps that come stock with the keyboard. I might even use these after I modify the board, which we are gonna do, of course. The, uh, the keycap puller is not really gonna work here for the escape key. Um, I pulled out the wrong one. Of course I did. I gotta grab the other toolbox. Come here, toolbox. So, happy Easter, Sebastian, my friend. Have a happy Easter, man. Have a happy Easter. Let's see. All right, so, let's compare here. All right, looks like these are a little bit wider. The, the ones that I have are a little bit smaller. Yeah, so they fit. Isn't that an interesting oversight here? Look at this. So this fits in the escape key. This is like one of the key cap holders I bought off of Amazon that are El Cheapo. But the one that actually came with the keyboard is not small enough to fit within the escape key cutout within the board. So you might have to use the, uh, the old pincher method, which is just pulling on the key cap. That's interesting. I didn't really think there would be a different size for keycap pullers. Oh well, just just the more you know, I guess. And you kind of you kind of have to go sideways with these. Oh man, these are so clicky. They they actually feel nice. If there wasn't a click bar, they're actually pretty smooth. So that's that's uh, pretty surprising. I'm not gonna lie. Whoa, we're all gray today. But it's sunny outside. Square, what's up, man? <laughs> I live by El Cheapo's reputation. Uh, don't we all? It's just something we got to bargain with in our lives. Not everything could be expensive, okay? Got to be El Cheapo a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. And I got to stop flicking these keycaps at me because it's making me mad. Oh yeah, you know what? I should probably uh, <laughs> I should probably remember that home delete page up and page down are on this side. Oh yeah, that's right. Can't this is not gonna fit in here. The keycap puller is not gonna work here. So there we go. I'm just pinch it. At least the the keycaps are tall enough that you can pinch on them. Here we go. So they're not too hard to take off if you don't have the keycap puller to work. A little question, do you have like a tip for removing switches when there just isn't enough space for the switch puller to fit like with the Efro? Oh, for the switch puller? Yes, that is tricky. So what I usually do to pull a switch out, like you can see here, it can get a little tricky. Wow, this thing has a lot of flex. Um, Cause like both edges, as, as you guys can see over here, or over here, if this is better, uh, it could be a little tricky. See, this has a gasket mounted keyboard, so you can actually press on the plate a little bit to dip beneath the top of the case here, and then you can reach in. So that might be a little bit easier, but I would recommend getting a switch puller that has a more narrow mouth. So for instance, Like this guy right here. This I got from Canon Keys, if you can see that better. And then just look how narrow that is. Like if you're going to pinch the keycaps, you gotta work around this bulge. Versus here, it's very uh, straight. So it's, it's more of a precision tool. So this is what I would recommend. This is about $15 and it's made out of titanium and it hasn't bent on me yet, so. Uh, granted, I haven't put it through a ton of abuse, but I would highly recommend this shape for 
a switch puller versus something like this because when you get into these tight spaces it's really annoying so i hope that helps uh if you need more context i would be happy to explain that would be my workaround just using a better switch puller like that i bought a switch puller v2 it saves lives it does saves lives it does saves lives i don't even know how to english today omg helps oh yeah thank you i see all right awesome so i'm glad that helps because i've i've definitely scuffed some keyboards trying to jam a switch puller into the side of the keyboard yet yet big yet all right let's see who wants to bet these stabilizers are actually uh plate mount let's see come on yeah their plate mount. All right, let's see if we have support for screw and stabilizers. I haven't read through all the press material, so I'll, I wouldn't know. Yeah, thank you. I'll I'll buy one. Yeah, I highly recommend them. Good good use of fifteen dollars. That should last a long time because you can spend four dollars on these or get them with keyboards. But I break these all the time. Break them all the time. Anything titanium sounds fancy. It really does. I ah. I'm a big proponent of titanium. My dad had these nice titanium Oakleys back in the day. They were like one of my favorites because they were big sunglasses, so they actually covered my eyes and they were very comfortable because they didn't like chop off my ears and they weren't made out of plastic. So I was like, all right, these are actually kind of worth the money versus paying for a hundred dollar plastic sunglasses. But hey, I'm not gonna hate, people can spend their money on what they want. I'm not even using the keycap puller now. I'm just using my, my fingers at this point. I love when I can just use the fingers to get the keycaps off. So much more efficient. The only problem is, is that these switches are very, very clicky. So you guys just have to bear with me through all this clickiness. I, I really do apologize. You know, I bet this profile would be good for those who like to reverse their space bars to kind of get that slant because it's like super comfortable. So you know what, maybe I'll try this out. You know, I want to try something different. I like trying a whole bunch of different profiles and different switches and everything. Because if I just do the same build over and over again, like what's the point? What is the point? Got to try it up. Switch out the uh, different kind. Yeah, look at that. So you could go this way, but that's more of the traditional looking way, but this is the way it comes out from the factory. I like that. Okay, those keycaps, the, the bottom row of the arrow keys are a little tricky to take out by hand. So this I'm going to use the keycap puller. All right, very cool. All right, so if you guys wanna see this thing get put to work right here, allow me to introduce you. I reverse it all the time, but since it's DSA and blank, it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, DSA will just go either way. It doesn't even matter. I'm only into the hobby for like a month and I'm already down. <laughs> oh my God. All right, down $700 in keeps, bro. <laughs> no, no, you sound like me. Dude, I've spent way too much. I have a pile of keyboards that came in through the mail uh, just over like the last couple of months and it is driving me up the wall just seeing how much money i spent because you don't really have an idea everything's usually spaced out so it doesn't make you feel too guilty about it and then you realize it when it comes through the mail and you're like how much money did i spend on this oh yeah and if i put that 400 dollars in tesla or apple or something like that probably could have had 500 by now by the time that uh the keyboard or the keycaps actually came around but hey we like to spend our money on things and that's why it's a hobby, right? So can't always think like that. Um, so I'm, I cannot judge there. $700 could be well spent. It's all within your personal justification. Been there, still there. It's funny cause you wanna get like this crazy high-end keyboard and then after you get your cra crazy high-end keyboards, at least for me, I'm like, all right, what's the cheapest, like most, quality keyboard I could build for like the least amount of money. Well, I already said cheapest, but yeah. 
Oh, this one's being a little tough. There you go. Get out of there. I always worry about scraping up this plate. So it looks like, obviously, we got an aluminum plate over here. And this gasket is very flexible. This is probably the most flex I've seen on a stock keyboard. It's definitely more flexible than the Keek over here. That's also gasket mounted. Also a great keyboard. Um, this one's obviously a little less money. doesn't have all the features that the Keek one does, but this is really nice for the amount of flex. So I'm kind of hyped for this. Topo Brundle, do you recommend Akko keycaps? I do. I made a, I made a video about Akko keycaps. I am a big fan of what they're doing. Um, they're, they're like 50 bucks. You get a whole bunch of different uh, layout supports and or you get a bunch of different layouts that are supported. And then you also get double shot keycaps, which are great for what they, what they do with them. I mean, some of the legends are kind of whack, but for the money that you pay for them and having them in stock, I mean, it's hard to argue with them unless you feel like spending more money by all means do that route. Yeah, I want the cheapest of the cheapest ever. So like a free keyboard, just go to like a garage sale and then find like, like some old vintage keyboard. Some of these are a little tough to take out. Some of them are coming out pretty nicely. Oh my God, they're so clicky. Ugh. Does anyone here actually like clicky switches? I'll be surprised. I won't be too surprised. I actually worked with a guy uh, at work. Oh wow, that one went flying. Oh, I found it, nice. And he loves clicky switches. I'm like, what? Who are you? Out of all the people I met, that's actually keyboard enthusiast in real life. And he actually likes clicky switches, but he's cool. He likes tactile more than clicky. So it's not like his go-to. Akko has some nicer ones these days. They really do. I think they've been getting their uh, their quality up there, I think. Their quality is definitely getting up there. Uh, it's definitely improved since the first time I've seen them. And yes, some of their colorways are a little derivative, but you know what? Um, that's just the way it is. They have their own novelties, at least. For under $30, I can't complain about something... I can use in three different ways, even a generic and pro two, which is pretty decent for the price to performance at around 70 to $80. Yeah, exactly. You have the wireless functionality and you can pretty much bring it to school or work or wherever. And you know, for 70 to 80 bucks that's utilized as a tool. When you see the utility out of something like that, that's where it starts making a lot of sense. But you know, when we start spending $400 for an all aluminum keyboard kit, you know, it's not much of a necessity, it's just the hobby. <laughs> and I cannot judge with that, honestly. Oh. Makes me ick hearing the click. Yeah, yep, yeah, me too. It's uh I don't know. I try. I've tried it before. The first keyboard I had was very clicky. It had MX Blues, and I thought that's just what good sounded like. But that was back in 2016. The times were much different back then. Wow. Um, but now I've I've tried, and people have tried to convince me, but I I just can't. I just can't do it. One of my first mechanical keyboards was the Game K MK61, and now I just put GMK Arctic on it and then I can live with it even though it still sounds like trash. At least it looks good. The GMK Arctic already released, like that's already gone out. I thought Arctic, um, where is Arctic? I thought I bought into that actually. I can't even remember all the stuff I have. I know some people use spreadsheets to keep track of everything, but I'm just terrible. I just look through old emails. And I really like 2.4 gigahertz in Bluetooth over something that's like Bluetooth and USB-C. Yeah, if it has 2.4 gigahertz, it's a win-win in my book. That You just can't beat 2.4 gigahertz in terms of latency, at least right now. I never use Bluetooth or a dongle. I don't know. It's more reliable. Yeah, USB-C, I think, is the way to go for uh, just aesthetic purposes and then, you know, dead reliability. But if you like the to cut the cord and all that sort of stuff. 
2.4 gigahertz would be my go-to, absolutely. And then Bluetooth is just for, I don't know, maybe work or something like that. I need to have a, like a mobile workstation and, and I don't feel like bringing the dongle with me or worrying that I'm gonna forget it or something like that. Or I, ha I have limited USB ports, USB-A, I think it is, USB Type-A ports. Because like, for instance, for work, I use a Mac uh, and it's all USB type C. There is no USB type A. So you would need to bring a, a uh, what's that called? Like USB type C to USB type A, and then you'd have to worry about that. So having the Bluetooth just works out really nice for those sorts of scenarios. All right, we got all the switches out. Very nice, very nice. Let's see what this looks like. All right, so we have north facing LEDs, which uh, that's a bit of a shame that we have north facing LEDs. I mean, it's not a huge shame, let's be honest. How many people are actually gonna complain about that? I don't know. In terms of keyboard enthusiasts, a, a good bit of people. So that's the only downside to this so far is like we've got north facing LEDs. Uh, we could try some different keycaps, some cherry profile keycaps and see uh, where we get in terms of clearance, especially with the flex. We'll see if we get any clearance issues or any rubbing. After using this keyboard, I can successfully say that $30, but this keyboard and I lubed up the red switches. It feels great. No connection issues whatsoever. And switching around is easy. It really is. And $30 is, you know, I mean, that's like the standard price for a keyboard. So having all that utility is like a Swiss Army knife. I wanted to build a key for my friend, but he wants a numpad with it and have no idea what board I want to use. Opinion on vintage whites. So um, are you talking about like OG vintage whites? Because, or are you talking about these ACO vintage whites? Because that's what these... These are the Akko Vintage Whites, and we'll be using these today. So let me know if those are the ones you're talking about in terms of uh, the Vintage Whites. Um, but yeah, finding a keyboard with a numpad, like a custom one, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I've been trying for so long. I missed the Odin group buy, and then I was like, ah, well, I give up. Well, I actually, no, I did. I did. I got the Wyvern keyboard, uh, which is Southpaw, actually, which is even harder to find. I also have an Orochi V2 mouse, and it's great because it also is 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth. It's a lightweight mouse with battery power, so I change it every four months. That's pretty nice, actually. Sounds like you got the ultimate, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the ultimate versatility type of setup there. I sent the link to Twitter, and the sale is still going. All right, word. No, the Akko. Yes, I have the Akko Vintage Whites today. So these are the ones that we'll be putting in, into the keyboard. I have not tried these before. Uh, so I won't be modifying them just because I don't have enough time to do so. But uh, those are them right there. And we'll take a look at these in a little bit. But let's get this keyboard taken apart. Just to wanna look at it, get some stabilizers in here and all that sort of stuff. All right. So we got eight screws over here. Fair enough. Got my little parts tray right here. Rainbow colored, of course. And then... Uh, let's see. A little iFixit toolkit. Keyboard products are all packaged so fancy. They really are. I mean, now it feels like... I mean... They're really just like shaming Apple and Samsung and anyone else that has fancy unpackaging feel to it because keyboards are just like the ultimatum when it comes to <laughs> fancy unpackaging. Like even even like the board or the switches there, they're getting super fancy now. I'm like, dude, what what is going on here? <laughs> it's a cult. Oh yeah, 100% cult. I'm not even gonna try to lie. It's fantastic. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way. I think it's crazy that some people won't even use the O-rings to get rid of wobble. Like it's $6 and so easy to do. 
See, the problem I have with O-rings, though, is it shortens the, the downstroke. So now you've got less of a stroke for the switch. Ever so slightly, of course. Depends how thick of an O-ring you use. And, um, you know, it, it, can, it can make it sound softer. But, I don't know. I just don't see the results being that good. It depends. I remember trying to use O-rings on a really clicky keyboard and it was just terrible. It felt mushy and I still had the loud rattliness from all the clickiness and I was just like, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm gonna build a real keyboard now. I'm gonna build a real keyboard. But O-rings are O-rings. You know what? People use giant gummy O-rings for, uh, for mounting keyboards now. You get some decent flexor there. All right, so the top slides off like so. And it looks like we have our gaskets already pre-installed here. It looks like you can add some extra gaskets. So you can add, they have more cutouts for gaskets here. Which, uh, I don't know, does that increase stability or flex? Or does that not really do anything in terms of, of flex? All right. And then, let's see, can we separate this from the the bottom of the case here. Let's see, yes we can. Oh, what? Yes, thank you. I'm so happy there's no like little attached wire. The USB, the USB C port is actually attached to the PCB for once. That is nice, thank you for doing that. I don't have to worry about a daughter board. Ugh, that is one of the nice things about a simpler keyboard. I used to use O-rings for my silent keyboard, but it just makes everything mushy. Yes, I agree. I agree. Unless you just really need to silence a keyboard and you really don't want to spend any money, then yes, use O-rings. Just feels more firm on clicks. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, it depends. Like, do you want that like little firm bounce at the top or at the bottom of the stroke? That depends. I don't think it changes much unless you add a ton. I usually use one, but I've seen people use three. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's just killing it all together all right so oh no guys there's no there's no screw in pcb support that's that's real sad damn all right well there's no screw in pcb support i don't know how i feel about that i mean yes it's all inclusive 160 dollars, but i think there should be at least screw in stabilizer support but the problem is Let's say there were holes in the PCB for screwing stabilizers. The fact that there's plate mounted stabilizers here, or at least support for them, would mean that the screwing stabilizers would be very tight of a fit. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. All right, let's see how, these are actually pretty tight. There's not a lot of wobble here. So, that's pretty decent. So let's hear what one of these stabilizers sound like without any modification, just to get an idea of what these sound like, just stock, because I don't feel like we get an accurate representation with the clicky switch. Whoa, the simplicity. I know, right? It's a rare thing to see these days. I actually like the separate uh, daughter boards. Visible sadness. <laughs> I, I'm back and forth on them. I like seeing the USB-C port attached directly to it, but I guess it does give you some diversity into foam and mounting options as well. So, I mean, there is that. And then of course, like I mentioned earlier, we've got our, uh, our uh, foam over here. So the gasket mounting is actually pretty well aligned here for factory, I think. Um, so I'm happy to see this installed so well. Just a little sad there is no screw and stabilizer support. So these are the vintage whites from Akko. Uh, these are three pin. So they, these are not five pin. They got a nice sound to them. It's a pretty deep sound actually. I don't hear any spring ping either. So there's no crunching on the spring, which is pretty nice. Uh, there's a little bit more north to south wobble than there is east to west. 
but the wobble is within tolerances and you, you need a little bit of wobble so that's pretty good um it's not super smooth per se i mean it is it's it's smooth enough out of the box is what i'm going to try to say but honestly if you just put some 205 on here it would definitely make a difference i feel like um i'm just not going to do that for this stream otherwise this would be a 10 hour stream <laughs> it would be a long time but we what we are going to modify is the stabilizers so i just want to get some lubricant on the stabilizers and oh wait wait a minute almost forgot we're going to see what the stabilizers sound like before we modify them so we need to know what it sounds like all right let's get one of these bad boys in here and then uh I'll just put this guy on. All right, I'm just going to take this out. All right. Not bad, actually. For a stock plate mounted stabilizer, I'm pretty surprised. It's pretty good. All right, so. We are gonna modify it a little bit. It does need to be modified a little bit. There's a little bit of shakiness in the stabilizer. It's a little bit of rattle in there. Uh, no ticking though, so that's nice. They sound similar to KTT roses in my eyes or ears. I don't know. <laughs> I always say the same thing. Like, do I do I speak an ear or speak an eye? I don't know. Uh, I think I've heard of KTT roses once, but I can't remember what they sound like off the top of my head. All right, so let's see how many screws we have in here to remove the plate from the PCB. It looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got six screws in here. So not a lot of screws. I like that. The, the tooling is pretty good here. Let's see, are these different? Are these a different size screw? Yes. So these screws are a little bit shorter than the screws that hold the case together. So just keep that in mind when taking this apart. I might actually just keep these off of here because it's hard to tell which which screws are which. It's just too much going on in terms of visibility. Well, that sounds pretty pingy for me, bro. At least in the mic, though. Probably better in real life. The, uh, the stabilizer or the... Uh, the switch because I didn't hear any spring pinging in the uh, in the switch here well actually no there is some there is a little spring ping when you release the stem and a little bit when you're typing I just had to hold it up close to my ear see the microphone can pick up different things than what I can hear depending on which way I'm trying to listen to it from. Do I hold it in front of my face or to the side of my ear? I don't know. What will make me hear it better? So I think uh, you could probably bag lube these, I think. I don't know, just like bag lube the stems and springs and then it would probably be pretty easy. All right, let's see. Oh, what is this? Oh, this is for the USB-C. So the USB-C port has this little, I don't know what to call this, plate that goes over it. So that wedges in between the bottom of the PCB and the plate here. And we also have a silicone dampening pad. That is pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. This is pretty nice right here. I'm glad that they put this here. All right, cool. Very cool. All right, so nice thing about having this is like if you decide to do a Band-Aid mod, you can at least have all the cutouts for where you need to put everything exactly, which is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a little Band-Aid mod here just to give it a little bit of a damp surface to come down onto. Give it to me now. All right, so. Let's get some Band-Aids up in here. I would definitely recommend lubing the vintage whites. They have a nice sound signature to them and you can also get some extra bassiness from them if you decide to lube them up a little bit. I don't know why I'm doing this with uh, flush cutters. Probably not the best idea. Not the best idea. 
Oh well. Finally, someone has a BenQ monitor. Nice. Yeah, man, I <laughs> I made a review for this monitor so long ago. I think it was like back in 2019, but I'm still using this monitor. I've yet to find like a monitor worthy of upgrading or spending the money on just because monitors have been updating and upgrading so fast. The technology has been crazy. Like the development of OLED alone is insane. So I haven't really bothered with like trying to get the top of the line monitor. If it was sent to me, maybe, but I mean, if I'm, if I'm just buying it with my own money, it's, it's hard for me to justify it when new monitor technology comes out. And then we have things like mono price or dark matter, uh, their, their gaming brand that are releasing gaming monitors for excellent price. And Ben Q has been doing that for a while as well. And you know what? I, it, it's hard to complain. I'm just like, man, it, it's hard for me to like spend $1,900 on a monitor from like gigabyte or something like that. And even those guys that now they have like decent monitors for a decent price. So the Ben Q monitor here is 144 Hertz. It is, uh, I forget. Oh, it's, it's not IPS and it's not a TN. It is the VA, it's a VA panel. So, and it has some fake HDR. The HDR is not really that good, but it's decent enough when you're just watching movies or, or content and stuff like that. Sometimes the shadows get a little too heavy, but other than that, it, it's very nice at 144 Hertz and the size is perfect. So it's 32 inch with a, I forget what the, the curve is, I think 1800R or something like that. And it's perfect. It's like, I, I have not found a reason to get a better monitor yet because it, it just suffices what I needed to do so well. And I love the, the kind of viewing angle it gives me because it's not an ultra wide. And I've thought about getting an ultra wide monitor for a while, however, the problem with ultra wide is just like some games still don't have support for ultra wide. There are uh, sometimes uh, like watching videos and stuff like that will look just weird. They're just kind of centered in the center of the screen with these big black bars on the sides. And so it just looks like you're watching a really tiny video, but you're not really. Uh, so there's just some drawbacks to ultra wide that I've, I've considered before. So I just haven't really found a reason to, to upgrade from this. I always beg my mom to, to make pasta carbonara cause the sauce jars are amazing for keycap storing. <laughs> if they come with pre-built, otherwise I'll just keep the box. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Mom, make us some of that pasta. Will you? I need those jars. <laughs> I saw this on Pinterest. Uh, yeah, so now you have somewhere to store your switches and you get leftovers. It's a win-win. That's a brilliant idea. All my all my sauce is made uh, from uh, can, uh, canned tomatoes and then fresh tomatoes. So I make the sauce myself. But if I had jars of tomato sauce, uh, I would definitely wash those out and put key ca or switches in them. That's perfect. That is hilarious. It is so funny. Oh, I'm going to lose it. All right. So another thing we could do is probably like a PE foam mod. We could probably do a tape mod and all that sort of stuff. But let's just hear how this sounds like stock, like out of the box. You know what I mean? So we're not going to go too crazy with, with modifications just yet, unless someone really wants to hear it. Then I'll be down. We could do that. But let's get these, uh, let's get these stabilizers out of here first. Wait, do you make your own music? That's amazing. No, I make my own sauce, but I do make some of my own music. Or at least I used to. I used to have time to make music. I would just make like really simple beats and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes I would use it for YouTube, like intros and stuff. Uh, I really tried to make like trap EDM music, but that kind of burnt out after everyone like changed the definition of what trap EDM was supposed to sound like. Now it just sounds like regular like, I don't know, house music. <laughs> I mean, it's not like house, but it's just, it's not trap. It's not, there's like no hip hop influence except for like a couple of snares. 
and hi-hats. But I do love making me some pasta sauce, which reminds me, actually, I think I am going to make pasta tonight. Make some pasta with some ground turkey. It's going to be amazing. All right. Let's see. I don't think these are actually lubed. Are these lubed at all? Uh, there's a little bit, just ever so slightly, which I do appreciate um, because my benchmark for the most over lube stabilizers I've ever seen was from the GMMK Pro. Uh, those are just gross. All right, so does it look like, oh yeah, I could probably clip off the leg here. Yeah, so we could do a little clipping. A little bit of modification. I have no idea what kind of stabilizers these are off the top of my head. I have some uh, Duroc and Gatoron stabilizers, uh, plate mount that is. But I don't think I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna try to use the stock ones and try to make this sound as best as I can get it, like just right out of the box. Because, I mean, that's kind of what this board is aimed towards. Since it's already pre-built, it's already, there's already other options available for $150, even from ACO themselves, uh, which I've made a, a, a video on as well. This is more of a board geared towards people that just wanna have something they can modify a bit and have that flexibility. At least that's what it feels like to me. I love asking weird questions to streamers because they either hate it or they love it. <laughs> I, I am all down for the weird questions. I think it always keeps the stream interesting in my personal humble opinion. All right, I'm just gonna grab lay paper towel. What's your favorite pasta? Uh, a favorite pasta would have to be, I think it used to be corkscrew. Um, I mean, they have like an official Italian name, but I just call them corkscrew pasta. Uh, but I get these, these uh, organic, I think they're organic. I have no idea, but that's not the reason why I buy them. The reason why I buy them is I love the pasta shape and they're from Costco, but I am forgetting what the name of it is off the top of my head. But they're very thick and they have a lot of pasta in them, like a lot of pasta material, and they're just amazing. A grade amazing. All right, so I am going to clip these. Just gonna clip the little legs here. There's one. The reason why I wanna clip these legs is just soften Soften it up just a little bit, just a little bit. It's just ever so light. Goat stabs, yeah. Some stabs they are. Didn't didn't they just release a new keyboard? Uh, what should we call it? What are their names? PC or Glorious? I want to call them PC Master Race because they use like literally the same logo. Um, they just really, I think Josh actually bought it. Isn't Corkscrew Fusilli? Eh, it might be. A couple of brands have like a different name for the Corkscrew shaped pasta. But off the top of my head, that's the only one I can name right now. It's one of my favorite. Besides Penne. Penne is always good. It's, it's like, just like a go-to that's so easy to use and very easy to cook because like the thicker pastas it's a little harder to judge when they're done other than just pulling them out of the pasta water and eating them yourself even when they float to the top sometimes they're not even all the way done because there's still pasta in the middle it needs to be cooked all right so those are done let me get some crytox 205 Isn't PC gaming race just glorious? I mean, it literally feels like that. Or the, the master race. Like, they had, like, the same exact logo. I was like, really? Isn't this, like, the same same thing? Am I, am I, am I tripping right now? I thought they just couldn't get the domain. <laughs> You're probably right. They probably couldn't get the domain. And so, like, does PC master race actually have a domain, though? Because, like, they're, they are a subreddit. They have a Twitter account. They probably have a website or at least a domain. They have to. 
It'd be silly not to. The name thingy. That's how I describe everything. If I can't think of the thing, the actual articulate name, I will just call it thingy. Because it's certainly a thingy. It's like, it's like that thing like, oh yeah, what's the difference between Land Rover and Range Rover? I used to think the Audi symbol was just the Olympic symbol, but with one less ring. I was like, oh, word. The Olympics is owned by Audi. Lubing some stabs. Nice. Yeah, man. Always lubing these stabs. Always some sort of modification going on over here. JD, I'm hooked on boards. Yes. It's just it's just nonsensical, right? How much money are you spending now, Josh? Have you told your accountant? <laughs> Have you told? Uh, I always tell the missus, it's like, oh yeah, the YouTube money, that's just where this goes to, I promise. It is, it is, but like sometimes I'm like, oh wow. I have no leftover money for like camera equipment now because I spent it all on keyboards. PC gaming race is an actual thing. <laughs> you thought the same thing with Olympics? All right, all right, all right. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh, I was just a kid. I was like, bro, don't tell me that's not the Olympic symbol right there. Out, it, it's the Olympics. I used to call Audi the Olympics car because I had. I was like, that's obviously the Olympics logo right there. Easy. Dan, what's up, my man? Sorry if the question is too private, but do you do any other stuff for a living besides YouTube? Uh, that's, that's not a private question. That's fine. Um, I've been wondering for a while for some reason. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm well and open to talk about anything else I do, honestly. That, that is not a problem to me. So aside from that, I am a, a software developer. So I just work full-time as a software engineer. Um or I think right now more doing QA testing. So it's not a lot of software development, but uh, it's labeled as a software developer. Um, so that's my full-time gig while I'm doing this on the side. That's why it's so hard to put out reviews and, and get, a, get a good stream schedule going and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I try to, but it, it gets a little tough to do both. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, that's what I do on the side. Not on the side. That's what I do primarily. I do this on the side. Four Rings and Audi represents original four companies from Saxony, Germany that merged and made Audi. Oh, I did not know that. The more you know. <laughs> I like that. I did not know about that. What what year was that? What year were did those four um, those four companies merge together? Because I know you know. Porsche has been around since the early days, really early days. So I, I, I'm not too familiar with the history of Audi. I tell Mrs. to what I get. She's okay with it as long as I pay my bills. <laughs> you paying the bills? Yes. Yes, honey. I swear I'm paying the bills. I pay the bills in keyboards. All right. These bad boys, we've got the pads down here, if you want to call it that. I'm wondering what I'm going to do with my keeps later on cuz I'm really I really want to keep them but I think when it comes to it I'll just sell them to pay for a house or student debt. I mean honestly right now I could probably put a decent down payment on a car if I tried selling all these keyboards. I mean it it's <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. I mean not a crazy down payment but just something. It would be something. And be like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a valid down payment. I get. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I have to put the stems back into the housings. Um, yes, so for me, I like to keep the keyboards just because I'm like, am I ever going to be able to find this again? I mean, yeah, eventually, because of how notorious this hobby has become, I think it would be easier to find the keyboard that you've been longing for or something like that. Even if it's not made by the same group by, group by runner or the same factory or whatever, 
you can definitely find alternatives that I think would suffice in case you did sell something you really liked. Unless it was something that was like super vintage or really hard to come by, you might have to make it yourself. For me right now, that's any keyboard with a numpad. Like any any like decent DIY aluminum kit that comes with a numpad. That is hard to find. So those things I would probably hold a little bit closer to the chest versus like, I don't know, a 65% keyboard. Sounds hectic. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. It's super hectic. I enjoy it though. It keeps it keeps me a little too busy. <laughs> um, do you use 10 keyless or smaller keyboards when working? It looks like most of your videos are about smaller keyboards. So for me personally, um, if I'm working at work, I actually don't, I would probably use uh, something with a numpad. Uh, even if it's like a 65 with a numpad or something like that. But I just use my laptop keyboard most of the time. Um, just because I, I just hop around all around the house. I don't want to stay in the office too much. Otherwise, I just get a little cabin fever. Um, however, for working with YouTube, I usually use 10 keyless or something with a numpad. It's definitely easier, I think. Uh, if I'm gaming, however, 65 cents are my favorite for gaming. Or 75. I'm not. I'm not going to shame 75. 75 isn't really that much bigger in terms of length, and I have plenty of desk space, so it just comes down to that, honestly. First company was founded in 1909, but Audi is working under that name from 1969. Oh, okay. See, that makes more sense because, like, I hear a lot more history about Porsche than I do about VW. And that's where I think, oh, yeah, that, that heritage is probably runs deep there. Whereas Audi's heritage is kind of broken up like that. So maybe strings of that company that originally founded Audi have been around longer than Porsche has. Hey there, how are you doing? Icy Keebs, what's up, man? How is everything going? We are working on the AC081. I hope this doesn't pop out. That wasn't a very satisfying click. All right, let's see. All right. All right, that seems to be working. Gaming 65 or 60. See, I just love to have arrow keys. If my 60 has arrow keys, I'm down. But if it doesn't, then I'm like, get out of here. Not really. Sometimes I'll, I'll game without the arrow keys. But like menu options and menu hopping and all that sort of stuff, it's just so helpful to have uh, arrow keys. I just love it. My first ever group buy was the QK65, but I had to wake up at 12 because of Central Eastern Standard Time or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done a couple of those where I'm like, all right, it's 3 a.m. Wake up or I just stay up till 3 a.m. I'm not going to write. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm like, I need to get this keyboard right now. You don't understand. Like I'm rushing through the house. Everyone's like, what? What? what, what? Are you good? Are you good? What's going on? I'm like, I got a group by. And they're like, I don't know what that means. Are you good? And I'm like, yes, I'm good. Plenty of desk space sounds like an understatement. Yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm so used to working out of a tiny little bedroom or a tiny little apartment. I always had to conserve myself with space, be very conservative with space. So now that I have this entire room to myself, I am not conservative whatsoever with this with this desk space. I am just gonna have as much desk space as possible. <laughs> I'm all right. How about you? I'm doing good. I am enjoying this weekend, just kind of relaxing. The last couple of weekends have been just doing projects around the house, projects here, projects there, getting the lawn in place, you know, home homeowner stuff. That's calling my name every day, but try to ignore it. But so this weekend, I'm just I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling. I wanted to make a keyboard. I just wanted to hang out. I don't like making a keyboard when I'm stressed or I don't have a lot of time. I like having, I like building a keyboard when I just got some free time on my hands and I'm like, I just, I just want to relax. You know what I mean? I only go with 65 actually, or 75, but sometimes layouts just for fun, but not for daily use or anything. Yeah. I find it would be a little hard to daily a 65. Um, just because I like to use the F row keys for, for hot keys and stuff like that. And alt F four is my friend when, uh, apps aren't behaving. 
but I could definitely, I could get away with it for a little while, I think, for sure. I mod my first 65% board. Love it. My other boards are 16 TKL. Yeah, I feel like that's, like, TKLs, I think, have made a comeback. Like, T 10 K kilos was just, like, not even heard of two years ago. I mean, not not in that kind of way. But just, like, there was no group buys for a TKL. And if you were, you were paying big money for it. Now, every freaking group buy runner is having a TKL everywhere. I'm just like, holy moly, this is insane. I also use uh, keyboards with numpads for work. Oh, you got an FC980M? Nice. I've always wanted one of those. Do you have the Topra version or do you have the uh, Cherry version? Oh, all right. I, I didn't even read the rest of it. I'm sorry. I answered my own question. With silent red, so I don't bother any of my colleagues. The Leopold makes a great keyboard. I'm not going to lie. I have been wanting to get one of their Topra boards for a long time. It's just, It's just hard because they don't have USB type C. Um, and everything I have is USB type C, even my, my, my laptop for work. So I'm like, ugh, if they only had it, I don't want to use adapters all the time. It just gets in the way. Um, but that's great. That's awesome. That's a great keyboard to have for work. When you start running through the house and your parents are thinking about all the things that could have happened, OMG, he's pissed. He's in his bed. Or he's being hunted. He's waving. Nightmare. Or he's having nightmares. <laughs> it's true. Like, I literally ran up the stairs to get... What was it? They, The key company's switches by C3 equals. I'm forgetting the name right now. Tangerines. That's what it is. Uh, some Tangy switches. These were when they were, like, first, first released. There was so much hype behind them. And I, I got the batch... And I didn't even like them. But there was so much hype. It was like, this is the smoothest switch in the game. I was like, word, bro. Let's do it. And there was like 50,000 switches to be had. And it sold out in like less than a minute or something like that. I was like, this is so dumb. <laughs> uh, it really is. But it, it's like comically dumb in a fun kind of way. Oh, I'm just going to get this group by real quick. That's literally me all the time. Yeah, working without a numpad is not fun. I don't crunch numbers for a living, but either way, uh, without having it sucks when you need it. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just nice to have, especially when it's on the left side of the keyboard so it doesn't take up your mouse space. And I think it's very utilitarian. And I think it should be in more keyboards. I don't know how good of a job I'm actually lubing these stabilizers, but... You know what? I think I think it's gonna be fine. I gotta go. Sorry, adios, amigo. Thank you for being here, Square. Hope to see you on the next live stream. Have a good one, man. Martin, what's up? Do you have any recommendations for a seventy-five percent or TKL under two hundred that thocks like a QK sixty-five? So. It's hard to build something that sounds like something off the off the top of your my head just because it depends on what kind of switch you get and all that sort of stuff. So are you just looking for like a kit that thocks for 200 or are you talking about like switches, keycaps, everything all in 200? Cuz that would be the real question right there. Uh, I got a Varmil, I got Varmil EC switches, not to bother other people. Those are good too. I like those EC switches. They're very smooth. They're just like optical switches. That's how smooth they are. Um, I ended up enjoying linear switches more than my previous tactile. So it ended up being a win-win. Yeah. The Varmil EC switches are actually really nice. I enjoy those a lot. I have one of those. Uh, I did a review on those EC switches. I was hoping they were going to use like some sort of rubber dome or something like that, but uh, they went they went with the uh, the traditional MX style approach, which is fine by me. I guess everything, yeah. So everything, including, it's going to be hard to think of something all inclusive for two hundred dollars for seventy five percent, because seventy fives are in that area where it's like not a lot of manufacturers make those 
like in bulk, like something that you would just easily find on Amazon. Cause you can find plenty of 10 keyless or TKL keyboards that are hot swappable and something that you can build out pretty easily. Uh, just because that, that, that layout so common for, for 75%. Oh, every 75% I know is going to be like $180 just for the kit. I think unless someone has an idea of otherwise you can find something on maybe KBD fans. Um, that's like in clearance. They might have their version two 75% that you might be able to find. That would be something worth looking into. I would probably go that route if you want something more custom like, and this way you can actually have, uh, a semi custom or at least a full on custom board. And then for switches, you can probably go with, uh, I don't know, something like, uh, what's a really deep switch. That's pretty cheap. I I'm trying to think off the top of my head. It's hard. It's hard to know what it all sounds like off the top of my head, but I'm thinking maybe Gatoron blacks. They have a pretty good deep sound to them. Or even vintage, like, cherry blacks. Those are going to be good, too, if you can find them for cheap. And they don't have to be vintage, either. They're just... Blacks are usually pretty deep in sound by themselves. Get a plastic board. Yeah, if you go with a plastic board, you're going to find something in your price range easier. I just don't know if there's plastic 75% that are going to be all inclusive with switches and, and keycaps, or at least something you buy all together for $200 or less. I was thinking about getting one Leopold with Topras, but they are double the price and not easily compatible with most of the, yeah, yeah, that's the problem. So you would have to buy uh, proprietary keycaps or something that is specific to Topra. And then on top of that, you're going to have to yeah, learn to deal with, with, with Topras because you can modify those. It's completely different in the modification process compared to trying to mod like a Cherry MX style switch. But they are they are very fun. They they are they sound amazing and I've always wanted them. It's just hard for me to spend almost three hundred dollars on one of those. It is so expensive. I just bought the, oh, I meant 200 for just a case, but for everything 300. Okay, so for just the case, I would check out, um, I think this is how you pronounce it, Idobao, I-D-O-B-A-O. -O. Uh, they have some good 75%. Uh, and then you can put in uh, a PE foam mod with the hot swap PCB, and then you can use uh, painter's tape or the tape mod underneath the PCB and then perhaps use if, if they have kind of a hollow -y sound effect but if you can find something like uh, like some sort of rubber or polyfill or something to put in the bottom of the case to kind of kill out that that echoey effect use that in there and then you probably have something that's pretty pretty deep sounding if you use a deep sounding switch like bobas or anubis switches or blacks or of some sorts I just bought the Prism Titanium Switch Puller, LOL. Yeah, dude, like, it, it's hard to beat, honestly. I was thinking about getting one with their Rose EC V2 switches, or maybe even those new tactile Iris EC switches. Oh, I didn't know they had a tactile one. The Lore Crane looks so... Yeah, Varmelo's designs are definitely... They're up there. They're really nice. I mean, they're very busy. If you don't like busy, then obviously it's not for you. But for people that like to see a lot of design, something that's uniquely aesthetic, um, I think Varmel is the way to go. Gatoron Blacks don't have a deep sound, LMAO. Uh, yeah, they do. They definitely do. I mean, here's one with Gatoron Blacks right here. These are, this is on an FR4 plate. Granted, these are opticals, but the materials are the same, just minus the spring in terms of the, the switch material. So the blacks, the blacks are pretty deep. And then these are 
Cherry blacks right here. These are, I believe these are cherry blacks actually. So those are some of the ones I have off the top of my head in terms of some of the blacks. And then Gator on blank, uh, Gator on ink blacks are pretty good. Blacks are heavy, but they are usually higher pitched LMAO. Um, I mean, not necessarily. If you lube them properly, so those are lubed with 205 and 105. So they they sound pretty good, I think, in terms of like like a depth sort of sound. How do I put this back? Didn't the tactile Varmilla switches end up being really squ really scratchy i am not sure i've never tried those i only had their linear versions they sent over to me so they sent me over a couple of extra switches that went with everything so those all together were mostly very smooth but i don't know about the the tactiles i do bow is mad integrated plates are very stiff some don't have integrated plates though pretty high pitch for me but that's just me uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think they're that high pitch. I think they sound pretty low for what they are. I think the highest pitch I have is probably uh, the tangerines are probably the highest pitch for me. And I don't really like them. Yeah, Ida Bao is not the best, but for $200 and a 75%, yeah, it's an, it's an integrated plate. So, I mean, it's going to be stiff. And it's going to have a really hollow -y type of sound. But, I mean, that's all I can think of off the top of my head in terms of what you can get for that. Hello. Hello, hello. I think a lot of the time switches don't have lots of an impact of the overall sound of the board unless they're clicky. That is also true. A lot of the sound signature comes between the mirror the materials and the volumetric space of the keyboard itself. And of course the plate material. Um, so the switches aren't going to have that much of an impact. Huh? That is interesting. It looks like, uh, looks like this was cut over here. And so is that it's an interesting cut pattern right there. I really like high pitch. I prefer higher pitch sometimes more than lower pitch ones. Yeah, it depends if the sound comes off as clean. So you can have a clean high pitch sound. Like uh what's a what's a really clean high pitch sound? I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head. I can't keep this in here. Oh well. I'm just gonna screw this in and see how it sounds. Let's see, get these together. I think most of the sound signature comes from the material of the board and the plate amount of foam, etc. Yes, I agree 100%. The, the switches aren't really gonna do much um, unless they have a very distinctive sound signature. Like especially brass, brass just makes everything super high pitched. So that's, that's kind of hard to uh, kind of hard to deepen <laughs> vintage blacks have a clean high pitch sound yeah yeah they do they um why i don't understand this little piece this little plate that surrounding the usb-c port like i don't understand how this stays in place we'll see we'll see if it stays you better stay in place bro It is hard to determine the best switch for everyone. And everyone has different preferences, lubes their switches slightly differently. It's very hard to replicate a sound that you hear in a video. It also depends on where the microphone is placed, how far away that microphone is placed, what the acoustics are like in that room, and then the, the board all together. What if the board has just the ever slightest difference in terms of machining from another board of the same type that can affect its sound. 
I mean, there's so many variables when it comes to sound. It's ridiculous. All right. Dan, it's been nice seeing you. Thanks for stopping by, bro. Good luck with the build. Thanks for the stream. Absolutely. Hope to see you on the next one. Exposed. TC Ice Candies for the win. I have not tried those. I actually did look at a couple of TC switches. Um, I haven't bought any yet, though. I do want to. All right, let's see. Switch doesn't sound that amazing right now. But let's see how this... Oh, that's pretty high-pitched. From the... Uh... There's no foam in here. There is a silicone pad. Don't know how that's going to change it all that much, but I guess we'll see. All right. Cable Mod Joe. Are you Cable Mod Joe? Is that who is in the stream right now? In for right. Hi. What is going on? In by right. Is that how you say your name? Your username? Am I saying it correctly? If I'm not, please correct me. Because I don't know. All right. I don't know how these stabilizers are going to sound. I didn't go crazy on the uh, on the modifications here. Hopefully it sounds somewhat decent. Definitely recommend the ice candies. I've heard of people actually liking those quite a bit. Oh, it is Cable Mon Joe. What is up, man? Thanks for stopping by the stream. We are here putting together this AJAZZ AC081. We're going to see how this comes together in terms of sounds. I don't have high hopes because there's no PCB foam. But we'll see. There's a bit of hollowness to it. And it's hard to kind of tell that initially because the switches that came with this board are very clicky. So, I mean, I couldn't really tell if this board was super uh, pingy or, or hollowy. Those are all names or words that are proper. I don't know. Probably not. But regardless, we're going to hear what it sounds like now that we have a linear switch and not a clicky one. I know nothing about keyboards. Well, if you're interested in about keyboards, you can ask away. I will not I will not have any judgment for those who don't have any idea about keyboards because it can be intimidating to ask questions. So thinking about getting a novel key 87. The 87 is pretty nice. The only thing I've heard about them is like the stabilizer. If you have screw and stabilizers, they're uh, a little a little tight. But I thought about getting the the NK87 with the milkshake edition because those I really like the look of those. I keep shorting my keyboard out from static. Annoying me, so I might retire it. What? It should be completely sealed off. It shouldn't be shorting at all. Right? Unless the PCB is on top of a piece of cardboard, which I've seen people do. So. Oh, inf infrared. All right, cool. I got, your, uh, I got your name right. I got your name right. All right. All right, so uh, let's just do, let's see how this sounds. I just want to know what this sounds like. I don't know, guys. I don't, I don't know if I'm, yeah, it kind of sounds hollow, doesn't it? And the stabilizer isn't great, but I mean, for what it is, yeah, I don't know what's causing it. Is it a soldered board? That would be my first question. I had a friend that went through something like that. It's a full carbon fiber case. Uh, I have an old Logitech keyboard. Oh, full carbon fiber case. I don't think I've seen one of those before, honestly. I've seen carbon fiber plates, but not a case. An old Logitech keyboard? You gotta start from somewhere. I started with some mushy membrane keyboard back in the day. That like came with all like the the windows all in one PCs. That was really uh, that was really something. 
I think I should put something in this keyboard, honestly. I think I should modify it. Cause I'm I'm not too crazy with how this sounds. Alright, let's try let's try let's try a couple other ones. Alright, so these are the vintage whites right here. Oh, it's hot swap. That's even more concerning. Why is a hot swap board giving you issues? All right, so this sounds a little too hollow for my liking. Let's see, let's put the six right here. Oh my goodness. This sounds so empty. This needs some modification. <laughs> yeah. Wow, all right, yeah. We're gonna need to modify this. You definitely need to modify this. Are you building it for a buyer? I am not. Although I am not opposed to building keyboards for people on stream though. I've thought about that before. I just haven't really materialized a process for it. Yeah, it's a YDM DK's hot swap 75% PCB. Oh, I've heard issues about their hot swap PCBs before. I don't know about shorting, but I have heard a supplemental amount of issues about those. So that might be <laughs> that might be one of the leading causes. I agree, too hollow. Are switches lubed? No. No, the switches are stock. And I'm going to leave them stock just for the sake of um, the fact that I don't really want to have uh, nine hours burned on just trying to lube switches. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't, I wouldn't burn that much time. But... I could always modify them at a later time because I'm very lazy when it comes to lubing switches. <laughs> but yeah, it's a carbon stack from Neo Keys. Oh yeah, the carbon stack. Okay, yeah. So I think I've seen those before. The NK87 would be a good step up unless you're trying to stay in the 75% realm. I've heard good things about the NK87s, just that the PCB stabilizers are a little tight because they have plate mount stabilizer support. So the cutouts are a little tight fitting. All right, so this thing is way too hollow out of the box. So let me do a couple of modifications here. The first thing I'm gonna do is probably something really simple, just a tape mod. All right, so tape mod, let's see. We put this over here. But it's a one of one. Oh. Okay, so I haven't seen this before. I feel like I have seen a carbon stack before. Owner of Cable Mod had it made for me. Oh. That's pretty sick. I think I've seen people make like a forged carbon fiber wrist rest. I think that would be really cool if there was a forged carbon fiber uh, case. It would probably be really expensive though. Or just cast it in, in resin or something like that. And he got a 96 key 101. So he's made these. They're just completely made from scratch. That's pretty cool. I always like keyboards that are made from scratch. Just for the sake of uh, having something that isn't going to uh, be easily replicated at least. That's why I made the, the wooden keyboard. It was the cheapest keyboard I probably made for the, I mean, the nicest cheap or the cheapest nice keyboard I've ever had just because I made it. All right. So we're going to do our little tape mod right here. We're just going to put on, I don't know, maybe a single layer. Just add a little bit of poppiness to the board. The board doesn't sound too great stock. So we're going to change this up a little bit. I have a matching wrist rest too that has that has pics of it. Oh, yeah, dude, I have to see that. That sounds really cool. The the matching carbon fiber on both sides of it. I saw someone making a forged carbon fiber wrist rest, um, but again, working with fibers and resin could be a little bit dangerous. You're getting them stuck in your fingers and all that, making the carbon fiber.
So you could probably put another 75% uh, PCB in there, right? Unless you would have to, if, if you find the layout to fit, I don't know, a 75% that just goes into a bunch of other keyboards. I'm not sure what the layout is like, but I mean, it also depends on what kind of mount you have as well. Ah, no. All right, well, you're going to the trash, friend. I wish it was forged. Yeah, forged carbon fiber is, is something special. But it has the car weave. Ah, yeah. I love that. That is so nice. It's got to have like a full-on car theme to it. Thanks for the stream and chat, but I have to go take care. Boris, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate you. Hope to see you in the next stream, my man. My man. Thank you. I need to find a scalpel. I'm just kidding. As long as the USB matches, gasket mounted. Okay. Yeah, so you could probably find something and just reuse that key, that case because that sounds pretty cool to stack carbon fiber. Oh, wow. This is not that sharp. Cool. Great. All right. My scissors are up there. I don't feel like getting my scissors, so we're just going to use this dangerously dull knife. Oh, wait. Maybe it's not too dull. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> you got matching headphones, too? Oh my God. So the setup is all carbon fiber. So I'm guessing it's all a car theme or similar to it. Oh man, that sounds like a sweet setup. See, I can never like commit to like one aesthetic for a setup. I feel like I'm always changing it. If I'm, if I'm changing it enough, I'm like, all right, cool. Like my headphones, they just look like headphones. I've seen people that have like matching headphones the keyboard wrist rest and the table like they'll have poured acrylic or epoxy with like a live edge table and they'll do the same thing with the headphones and it's just they're very expensive but it looks awesome i'm just like can i commit to making my entire setup looking like that when i change it out so often that is one of the only issues that i have with it all right so let's see what do we see? I don't think I want to use sorbethane per se, maybe polyfill. Maybe I'll use polyfill in the bottom of this just to kind of clean up the sound a little bit. I don't know. Not really car themed, just like carbon. Okay. See, I, on, I, I honestly just think of carbon and cars just to go hand in hand so often. Maybe I watch too many car videos. I don't know. No, I definitely do. My wife would tell me. I watch too many car videos. All right, huh. what do I wanna do here? What do I wanna do here? Okay, maybe I'll just put sorbethane in here. All right, I have an idea. I'm not gonna use polyfill, I'm gonna use sorbethane, which is like a rubber-like material. I just have a bag of like cut up pieces here. So I'm just gonna place them sporadically throughout the case to kind of kill out the hollow effect that we get while typing on the keyboard here. So let's just put that there, put this here, and this will just help. And then hopefully I won't lose too much flex with the gasket mount because the, the gasket mount's very flexible. It's pretty nice. I'm a car guy, but I don't really theme around it. Oh yeah, I got you. I, I've thought about theming out to a car before but what I think I would do in instead would be probably just make or have a car theme in my mind from a specific car and not really just around cars in general. Oh boy. Here we go. All right. So these pieces are very small. The only issue I have with sorbethane for anyone that's curious is that it sticks like crazy. So if you have a tight fitting keyboard and you're pulling up the PCB, you could easily uh, be stuck 
trying to get see like something like this see how deep those imprints are from the keyboard it's it's kind of insane so that's why i like cutting it into pieces as well so it doesn't make it as adhesively strong in terms of a bond let's get that over there let's break this up a little bit more Like my car has like a matte gray and then like a blue interior. So I'm like, I think I would build a keyboard around that. Actually the gray is kind of similar to this. So maybe I could theme that keyboard around it. It's like a Fuji theme a little bit with the kind of blue that's on the inside of the car. So that's probably how I would detail or not detail, but how I would theme a keyboard or a setup around it at least. I tried this sorbethane method once. Yep, I've done this a lot of times, and that's why there's a lot of it in this bag, because I ended up taking it out afterwards. Just because a lot of the time it killed the characteristics of the board. But if you don't use a whole lot of it, it actually works a lot better than just putting a single solid layer of this stuff down. So hopefully this will help out the sound quite a bit and get rid of some of that pinginess in it. Didn't really care for the stickiness. Nope, nope, I definitely don't either. This will just hopefully be my cure to the, the, the pingy sound to it. And like trying to take apart a keyboard when it has sorbethane in it is such a pain. All right. That should be enough. I hope it's enough. So this should cut down on the amount of surface contact with the PCB so you're not tearing your PCB in half when trying to take this keyboard apart. That's something I learned not while tearing a PCB but trying to get a keyboard open and I scratched the paint on the keyboard trying to open it. Bought the stuff, just haven't done it. Saw it on YouTube. Yeah, I want to do the silicone mold one. I have seen that as well. I'm tempted to try it. Um, I also I also really like the polyfill mod. I think that does a really good job at not killing characteristic while also giving you a nice airy texture to the sound, if that makes sense. Let's see if this sounds any better. See if my modifications will help. You can always add in more layers of tape mod. The tape mod does wonders though, if you really like a poppy deep sound. But then again, you'll make all your keyboards sound the same if you use it every single time. So again, it's preference. All right. So hopefully this will make it sound a little bit better. Still kind of bummed that there's no PCB stabilizer support. Oh, well. I guess. Okay. So sometimes when I put sorbethane in a case, I am fighting the case to get it down evenly. So uh, I think there's a good amount of room within the case to put down a sorbethane mod without worrying about really compressing it against your PCB. So that this way, if you ever take it apart in the future, you don't have to worry about it sticking together. All right. So it's definitely a lot stiffer <laughs> with the gasket mount, right? So the gasket mount. So if you want to keep the stiffness or the flexibility, I would highly recommend just using uh, the polyfill as an alternative. But let's see how this sounds. Oh, that sounds a lot better. All right. So that hollowy effect is now gone. Great. Just what I wanted. I think the same result can be had with the polyfill, but that's upstairs and I don't feel like getting it. So we are just going to use it within this keyboard right here.
might try a 65% and remind escape to top right or rebind. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's also fun. Like if you can find a 65% that you can have a little bit of fun with, like maybe like another stack like this on the side, that's also fun. Yeah, sounds good now, awesome. Yeah, I was hoping it would sound a little bit better because you're not gonna hear the sound characteristics of the board with those clicky switches in it. So it kind of masked what that sound was like. And luckily, I think this sounds a lot better now. And we can get a proper sound test without it sounding too hollow. So no sound test with a stock configuration, but that's fine because I think this, this kit is very modder friendly for those who just wanna maybe add a tape mod, take it apart, maybe put in their own switches, and that would be the extent of it. And I think you could really probably juice the most out of this board for, for what it is. And you also get a decent set of keycaps. So, I mean, it, it's hard to hard to complain with that. Ooh, almost just bent that pin. No thanks. And this is some fancy packaging for her. You see this packaging right here? For switches. I've seen keyboards wrapped in styrofoam. I've had camera lenses not even packaged this nicely. But hey, it is what it is. You know what? You could probably store your keycaps in here. This would be cool. But then again, you would have to uh, align everything ever so nicely to make it look cohesive. And that would just be more effort than it's actually worth, I think. I'd rather use the jar method. Look at this coming together. The white on gray actually looks pretty nice. It's very clean. Looking super clean right now. Ooh, baby. This looks so nice. The other thing I love about Hot Swap is I could just put this board together, and if I want to lube the switches later, I can do that without having to desolder the entire board. Oh, I didn't even look at what kind of sockets these have for the hot swap. Oh, man. Oh, well. Oh, well. All I know is it's north facing, which is unfortunate, but hey. Should I tr I'm wondering if I should try a different keycap profile other than the ones that it came with just because it has the north facing LEDs. See if we get any binding. Cause I know I got a little bit of binding with this keyboard and that has north facing LEDs, I think. Yeah, hot swap is amazing. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's hard to go wrong with hot swap. Usually it's like a $10 premium over uh, a solderable board, but I think honestly it's worth that every time. Every single time I'd probably take that. All right, there's one down. And we put these vintage whites to the test. What's the difference between north and south? So the LED here is facing towards the top of the board or also known as north facing. Um, usually if you want maximum compatibility, compatibility with other types of profiles for keycaps, you would have a south facing uh, LED. So that would mean the LED here at the top, the little white thing would be just facing towards the bottom of the keyboard. And this is usually beneficial to cherry profile uh, keycaps, I believe. Doesn't it just cause issues with cherry caps? I believe so. Um, I, I think there might be a couple other reasons, reasons that I can't think of off the top of my head, but yeah. So like, for instance, right around here where you have the pipe character and the enter key, 
that is usually somewhere where you can get some binding with cherry profile keycaps and a north facing LED. Because um, originally on this keyboard right here, this has north facing as well. I wanted to use the yellow accent enter key, but I was not able to. That one binded too much. Luckily there was the standard color, which is that, that deep purple right there. And that worked uh, better and didn't bind. So uh, that's just one of the drawbacks I've, I've been finding with uh, north facing LEDs. That's all I could really find. Yeah, I mean, some people have explained certain different types of issues. I haven't really delved too deeply into that, honestly. It's hard because I try to put every combination of thing I can think of in terms of, okay, here's a north facing keyboard. Let's put five different profile types of keycaps on here with different types of switches. And maybe one of those combinations will give me an issue. But at that point, uh, you would need a lot of resources and a lot of time to kind of figure that out. So the masses usually figure that out way well, 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 well before I can. And I can only speak on my own experience. So it's hard to really think of other instances other than just cherry profile keycaps, which is the usual complaint that I hear. I think it's warranted though, since cherry profile is so, so popular. Uh, I'm using a, I'm using Taro as well. Oh, nice. Don't think I've ever had an issue. Wow. Well, that's nice. I've I've had binding issues with like the shift the shift key and the enter key. I've had issues with here. I that's the like those are the two biggest ones I have with north facing LEDs and cherry profile keycaps. Taro is amazing. I love the Taro colorway. It makes me want to get boba every single time I look at it. Speaking of which, I actually do want some boba right now. That would be amazing. Let me get my tapioca. I think I should use a blue colorway for these. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use a cherry profile keycap. I'm going to put this to the test. Also need to make sure that these all work too. I didn't bend any pins on the way in. Ooh, that rhymed really well. Yeah, I prefer cherry. Yeah, I think cherry's the easiest. If I feel like changing things up, I like MT3, and I also do like SA, but they're they're so tall. They're very tall, so sometimes I gotta be in a mood for a really tall keycap, but I think for just everyday use, uh, I think uh, cherry's the way to go. I've yet to try the cat profile I think, and there might be a couple other profiles that I haven't tried yet. Cat's pretty similar to Cherry, if I remember correctly. I wouldn't know. I ordered a cat key set two years ago. I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> I don't think I have any close boba pieces in Michigan. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if Michigan's going to be very popular for, for boba yet. I know it was kind of a struggle to find it in South Carolina, but up here in North Carolina, there's actually a decent amount here out in the Raleigh area. It's pretty nice. They have a lot of food options here, which I am not used to. I'm just like, oh yeah, everything is just uh, chicken fingers, fish and chips and pizza and not even good pizza at that. So I'm glad of a little change of pace around here so I can find boba, I can find authentic Indian food. I could find Pakistani food. I could find uh, uh, Argentinian food, Peruvian, all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's just, and, and good Mediterranean as well. I think Cat is done like SA, but Cherry Height. height. Yeah, I think so. It's similar to Cherry Height. And that's why I was a little confused. I was like, oh, I didn't know Cat had its own profile. Let's see, V, yes, let's take VIA app. Let's make sure this works. I'm gonna go through the key tester, make sure this all works. Looks like we got some RGB right out of the box. What else is new? It's 2022, get with the program. All right, those all work. I'm a little sad I killed some of the flex on this. 
with the Sorba thing in the bottom, but is it flex or am I going for sound? I think I'm gonna go for sound. Nine times out of 10. Whoops. Yep, sticky keys, there we go. All right, they all work. Wow, that's rare that a hot swap board works right out of the box. Huh. Wish I could get a local Shake Shack. Oh yeah, I do like a Shake Shack. I like the little V thing that lights up, looks awesome. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of the 7V logo on those keyboards a little bit. But I like the logo that lights up. It adds a little bit of flair to this because otherwise it's a fairly safe shape. It's very rectangular, flat sides everywhere. I mean, it's not it's not um, trying to really do anything too different. But the badge over here and the little light up logo, I think it looks pretty good. Um, let me see if I can find those cherry keycaps and then I'm gonna put those on here. See what they look like. got them. Oi. Oh, you sent pics of the carbon board on Discord? Word. Gonna check those out. See what they sound like. I should probably clean up my workspace a little bit. This is looking crazy over here. Um, let's just dump it all into the box. That's what boxes are good for. So then we can make this area look nice and clean. Put this over here. I would like to get a, a car themed uh, keyboard going though. Something with some carbon fiber. Which is funny because 99% of the time carbon fiber is used on a car. It's usually just for aesthetic purposes. Unless it's like a carbon monocoque or something for the cabin. That's the only time it really isn't. I did not use the extra gaskets. Wonder if you could use this as foam. You probably could, but it's so thin, I don't think it would really make much of a difference. But I mean, the, the packaging is great in here. All right, let's put that in there. Definitely want to keep these keycaps. I actually really like these keycaps. The JSA profile, I could probably get used to. I'm used to ASA. But these are these are just cool. I like them. And they're double shot. A unique look to them. Alrighty. Just throw that in there. Throw that in there. You can go in here too. Come be my friends. There you go. Go there, you go. Oh, yeah, that looks 10 times better. And then we can all neatly just throw this on top of here. There you go. Yeah, only high end cars use carbon properly. Lambos, Porsches, yeah, yeah, I know it's crazy. I think, I think the only like non serious track car I remember actually using carbon fiber properly. I think there was. Uh, the LC 500 from Lexus uses a car like a hybrid carbon. It's like a what is it? It's casted carbon with like epoxy or something like that. I can't remember. In the doors or something like that. The save on weight, which is funny because it's a pretty heavy car still, but still, I mean, it actually uses carbon fiber somewhat structurally and. A lot, has a lot more intent behind it than just like your stand. Oh wow, I forgot one keycap. Nice. Then your standard vehicle. When Lambo. All right, that can go. 
go down there and then let's get this out of the way whoops all right Woo. there we go white balance is a little bit off it's making this look very deep and saturated um, you know what let's do this desk mat I already know what the desk mat I want to do if we're gonna do some blue we got to get some blue I've used this one before here there we go all right, so keycaps I'm gonna use here from Amazon. Pretty sure these are probably a ripoff from a GMK set. I have no idea. I just saw them on Amazon for about 40 some on dollars and said, hey, that looks cool and just put it in the cart because I don't really think twice about buying keyboard things. And that's a problem. But I think these would look good on this board here. Hey, now, don't be doing that. Not crazy about this packaging. Come on. Come on. Saran wrap over plastic? What kind of monster thought of this as packaging? Get out of here. All right. Jeez. All right. That was, uh, that was something. Oh, I hate the whole argument of clones, to be honest. Yeah, that is definitely an argument. It's an interesting one, because it's like, colors, it's, I, I think it's hard to make colors proprietary. Okay, I'm not crazy about that sound. Um... But novelties, I understand, right? You know, novelties are custom artwork and stuff like that. That's fine. But in terms of getting like a certain colorway to your board, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not huge on the fact that there's a strong resilience behind just gatekeeping these colorways. I mean, picking the colors is one thing. Designing your own keycaps in terms of you know a proprietary font or novel uh, Novelties and stuff like that It's uh It's not really something that I can really get behind in terms of copying But for the colors I'm like mm, I I could just see the colors being copied. That's fine. I personally think Yeah, I agree about the novels. Yeah, all right, it still sounds pretty hollow up top. I think the hollow is cured towards the center. And I think this is where polyfill would probably fill in a little bit more. But yeah, there's only so many colors, exactly. So, like, what are you going to do at that point? Are you just going to keep gatekeeping the colors because I mean there's different shades yes that can go against each other and whatnot and then these colors they're, they're not even produced to the same value as as like some of the other sets you know it depends on the the casting process and then the type of plastic and all that and um, you know that's just not going to be something that looks exactly one-to-one -to, -one to the original product anyway so it's gonna be slightly different so it's just crazy I didn't think the Gloria set was an issue uh, to Alex Oto's set. Oh, yeah. It was similar, but I don't think it was a clone. I didn't really get it. That kind of blew over, and I did not really take a closer look to that. I kind of just missed that in the background. I didn't even get to, like, I saw, like, the, the, the Twitter post, and that was, like, the extent of it. I want a nice purple set good purple set would be I think my favorite purple sets probably Taro still besides uh, there was another one that was that came out last year as GMK I'm pretty sure it's still in, in progress right now um, that was I forget what the name of it was but it was excellent it was so it was so vibrant 
haven't found what I want though. Like like a nice synth wavy type of purple. Like there's there's a you know GMK. What is it called? Laser. That's a good purple set, but like a different kind of purple set with with more vibrancy to it. Yeah, it wasn't worth the drama to be honest. So who did did Alex start that drama or is that like drama started by the community like calling out Glorious? Like I I have no idea how that entire thing came to fruition. I I just kind of saw it in the background. I read the statement by Glorious and I was like, "Oh wow, this this is uh, a lot of stuff." So I didn't I didn't really pay much attention to it. Nightshade Oh, no, I don't think it was Nightshade. It was something like... Oh, man, I can't even remember. I don't know why I can't remember it. It had, like, this really nice deep purple and these ultraviolet, like, bright violets in there. And uh, it just looked beautiful. There is one called, like, uh, Synth City that's still in the IC phase that I have not seen any updates on in a long time i was really hoping it would everyone was like this looks like gmk laser i'm like guys everything's gonna look like a certain key set eventually i mean they, they, you can only do three colors so many times <laughs> uh alex and oh okay apiary has been extremely vocal on clones yeah some pe some people are very vocal on them i'm kind of like i don't know I've thought about making my own set before and just not with novelties like with novelties I'm like yeah yeah you know I'm like I'd I would, that would require quite a bit of work and everything and like that I would not be okay with cloning but like in terms of uh colors I'm like oh, well I mean I'm just choosing colors here and the way they did the the keycaps I think it was similar right they had like the different like the diagonals of colors coming down. That does introduce some design ethos behind it. But again, I, I don't know. It's like artistry and copyright is just, it's a whole, it's a whole mess of things of like, oh, this is considered okay. And that's not considered okay. It's like, oh, well, we use ad blocker on our YouTube videos. I, I mean, I don't care. People do that all the time. I understand it. Okay, back now. How it sound? Uh, it sounds better. All the hollow hollowness is not gone yet. It's still very high pitched for my liking. I think I'll be using polyfill in this later on. I just don't have it on me right now, so I would just have to do that later on and get this fixed to what I like. But right now, it's gonna be passable for what it is right now. Cable mod is looking for designers. Oh, you guys are doing keycaps? See, I'm not well versed in actually make like uh, the whole process behind keycaps. I'm just good at like having a design language behind something. I'm like, all right, this is kind of the theme I would go for. But I haven't really reached out to anyone about it except for a few people. Um, so yeah, I would, I would consider it. I know Drop was looking for keycap designers, but I've heard back and forth things on, on Drop. So it, the the process of, of researching that and actually coming up with something that's not going to turn around and bite me in the butt or you know own my soul that would be great so yeah I'll definitely check that out but yeah they had some different colorways in the same design okay it's hard it's hard to just say like yeah you know that's uh that is the correct way this is not the correct way because what is piracy in some ways and I, I guess that counts under piracy right it's just like where where do those boundaries fall between and that's why it's such a controversial topic because there's so many gray areas about it it's the same reason why you know people make i know linus makes the uh, argument about using ad blocker as piracy um, I don't, I don't know if it technically counts as piracy. He would argue that it would be. So, I mean, there is that, um, again, I'm not well versed in, in that know-how of like, oh, this is piracy. That's not piracy. But if someone was using ad block in my videos, I'd be like, all right, that's fine. 
I mean, I get it. I'm like, you don't want to watch a whole bunch of ads on here. So, like, I'm not going to hold anyone to that. I'm not going to be like, oh, you can't watch my videos. <laughs> but people make a lot of money off of AdSense. I don't, so it might affect them differently. Me, on the other hand, not so much. Let's see, is this the one to fit? Yes, it is. Awesome. I like a proper galaxy set with purple. There was a keycap set that does, or a uh, a company that does do like a galaxy set, and they had like the stars like across the set and everything. But the one that I found closest that actually held up decent value was made by, I think it was Cat. I can't remember. And it was all space themed. It was very cool. I definitely bought that because I am a sucker for space. I'm like, yes, let's do that one. I don't like forced ads, but video ads like Linus promoting someone, I'm fine with. Yeah, yeah, forced ads are are tough to swallow. It, it really, like I remember, <laughs> like especially if you're watching someone, you're really engrossed into the video and the ad just zaps you back out of it. It kind of almost annoys you a little bit and reminds me of cable TV and that's not what YouTube is. And I would not want people to feel that experience with me. That's why I never really put in, um, I never put in uh, those mid roll ads. I don't like mid roll ads. I'm fine with them at the beginning and the end of the video, fine. Don't mind that. However, uh, like just, like especially for longer videos and stuff, like when I'm really engrossed into the content and there's a mid-roll ad, I'm just, it's just, it feels like cable TV all over again. It makes me not want to watch it. And that's why I never put mid-roll ads on my videos, or at least I try not to. I don't know if they somehow get there or not. Let's see, is there any warping in this? Yep, there's a good bit of warp in this space bar. Not a lot, but that could be fixed later on. Are these double shot? No, these are die sub. All right. Oh, at least the keyboard, I mean, the space bar sounds nice. All right, I got to find the modifiers here. Uh, Yeah, let's go with, uh, where's alt? Alt! Actually... Yeah. Come here. Come here. You can do it. There you go. Alt. Uh, let's use this for FN function key. And then let's use this for control. Where's control? Mission control. There we go. This keycap is actually pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. I, I actually prefer the texture of PBT over ABS. All right, I gotta figure out what these are. How do you guys think? What do you guys think of this uh, this colorway? You think the blue on the matte gray finish is looking nice? I think it looks pretty good. I'm I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Let's see. Uh, which one is this? This is this is home. Okay. Let me find home as a top row key. Okay, I think this will be fine. Is that the same? Yeah, that's the same profile. Okay, this is, that's delete. All right, delete will be right here. I think that's the same profile. Yep, same profile. Uh, this is page up, page down. Okay, so that can go either way. Page up, page down. Is there another type of page up though? All right, yeah, let's use this one. Yeah, page up, page down. I think that's the right one. Let's see. Oh yeah, first try. All right, yeah, so that's the right one, cool. All right, very cool. I got them all on the first try. So do you guys like the white accent here or do you think I should do blue here? 
Yeah, I prefer PBT. I like it. It looks good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it looks pretty good too. These are actually pretty decent keycaps for what they are. The the die sub is good. The legends look pretty clear for what they are. And they're not super crisp, but I mean they're good enough. And I like I like the texture of PBT a lot. Wait, is there even a choice to use a blue enter key here? I don't think there is. No, there isn't. All right, so you're stuck with white. That's all right. Adds a little bit of an accent flair to it. That's fine. Let's see what it sounds like. It's not going to sound amazing. This wasn't heavily modified. Blue, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I'd use blue too. But there isn't an enter key that, that's blue here. Why is there a bug here? Get out of here, bug. All right. Let's see what this sounds like. Let's pause lay music. And then we'll go here. We'll go to monkey type. All right. Monkey type is open. Let's see what this sounds like. And of course, I'm not gonna be able to see monkey type too well because the microphone's gonna be in the way. You can see it right there. Sorry. All right, so let's see, about eight inches from the source directly overhead. That's the kind of sound we're gonna get here. Hey, there we go, tighten that up. All right, so uh, let's see. All right, caps lock is on, of course it is. All right, so hopefully everyone can hear that okay. This is what the mouse click sounds like. All right, so this is what the keyboard now sounds like. All right, 91, not bad for looking around a microphone. Not too shabby. All right, uh, let's do a, another one. It's got a nice little poppy sound to it. That's just from the uh, tape mod though. Um, I like the I like the pop, but I like the clackiness from the vintage whites. They got a nice, nice high pitch sound to it without like a piercing sound behind it. It's got a nice, crisp, clean sound to it that I like. I would probably put a little bit more polyfill in here. I'm speaking as if there's already polyfill in there. I would put polyfill in here um, just because there's still a little bit of that reverb that you're getting just from the solid aluminum case and there's no foam. There's just sorbethane in there. So um, that's just part of the sound characteristics of the board. I would recommend putting some polyfill in there. But anyways, let's do another one. All right, 97. 
Not bad. All right, let's hear what everything sounds like. So top row here. That's where you get most of the echoey effect inside this case. And these are unlubed too. So, I mean, there is a little bit of that going against this keyboard. So, I mean, these are just stock vintage whites from Echo. It sounds a little bit cleaner. Yeah, that sounds good. Probably my favorite row is right here. And this sounds pretty similar to the middle row right here. And then the corner over here. So everything from like this row and down is probably closer to the bottom of the keyboard in terms of the space between the PCB and the bottom of the case. And that's where the sorbethane is probably doing the most work. Up over here, there's probably probably a little bit of a gap from the bottom of the PCB to wherever the sorbethane is, um, just because this is obviously on an incline here. Um, so that's probably why you're getting most of that compared to a much more solidified sound. Okay, so now let's hear the modifiers. Eh, it's not bad for a plate mounted stabilizer. I didn't really do too much to these. Kind of surprised at the space bar, to be honest with you. Okay. I think I'll, I think I'll take that for, for what it's worth. I mean, yeah. So let's let's get my microphone back over to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So let's see. What are the people saying? All right. Can you redo bottom left? Sounded like maybe there was some case ping. Uh, there might be. Sounds pretty good. Thank you, man. Drampian, let me get you that bottom left real quick. Just gotta point the microphone back over real quick. Alrighty, so putting the microphone in the same spot as last time. All right, so here's the bottom left. I don't know if it's technically case pinging, but you can tell it just sounds a little bit hollow. So I guess that counts as spring ping. It's hard. It's hard to determine versus like. That sounds pingy versus that. So I think there's definitely a reverb or echo over here on this side of the case. Hmm. Versus, you know, this. This is much cleaner compared to this. Maybe the whole, actually, no, yeah, there's definitely ping here. Okay, yeah, so it's like a lower pitch ping on that side. All right, yeah. I mean, there's kind of just ping all throughout, but <laughs> you're just gonna have to put polyfill in it, I think. I think, or you can put silicone or the glue, glue mod. Oh uh, yeah, it didn't sound how I thought I heard it in the test. Thanks for that. Yeah, of course, absolutely. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I am more than willing to answer. Um, yeah, so. I guess my overall thoughts on the case here are important because this comes in at $160, but it's a full, fully built out case and keyboard, right? You've got switches, you've got keycaps, you've got a working keyboard. Um, the first thing is the CNC machined aluminum case looks great. I mean, for what it is, there might be a couple of blemishes here around the badge. Um, that's only the only place I've really noticed it. The clearance and tolerances are pretty good. You can't see the bottom of the keycaps here. Uh, you can't see the switches underneath. So this is really good. 
I really like that. I like the fact that you're not seeing any switches or any gaps between the bottom of the switch, or the, I'm sorry, the bottom of the key cap to the top of the case here. So that I do really appreciate. So the tolerances are good. The fitment is good. The flex is also really good. The only thing that's killing the flex right now is the little bit of sorbethane that I put towards the bottom of the case, which addresses the issue that there is a lot of pinging in this case. Um, that's that's going to be solved with foam. If you could put PE foam in here, I'm not talking about sandwiching the PE foam between the switch and the PCB, but I mean like PE foam cut out underneath the PCB and within the case. If you cut maybe a couple layers of that, that might help solve your issue. Um, or a combination of that and sorbethane or polyfill. Uh, those are the ones that I'm most familiar with and those are the things that I would recommend for this board, definitely. Just to get rid of some of that pinging. Sorbethane alone is probably not gonna solve it. Uh, I, think, I think the polyfill will help. It'll fill in those gaps wherever there's air or empty space that's not killing the flex of the keyboard. And I think that'll give you the best middle ground possible. Also a little bit of a tape mod, doesn't hurt any time. Uh, especially with the vintage whites from Akko. They got a nice poppy flavor with the tape mod. I mean, that's what the tape mod does, but since there's like that higher pitched, clean cut sound from the vintage whites, I would probably recommend using the tape mod to, to, to really bring that to life. Um, aside from that, the, the keyboard is very nice. It's put together pretty well. It's not hard to take apart. This is very friendly, very approachable for DIY. Um, or beginners in the DIY space for building a keyboard. There's no screw and stabilizer support, which is a bit disappointing. I wish there was screw and stabilizer support. Um, that's one of the downsides, but we've gotten these stabilizers to sound pretty good. And all we did was put down a Band-Aid mod, we clipped the, the stab stems, and then we put some 205 within the stab housings, and then we put uh, XHT BDZ. Or is it the other way around? Yep, yep, that's it. XHT BDZ on the stab wire. And it sounds pretty good. Um, so very approachable, a good price at $160. Just a couple of tweaks I would make would, would just have support for screw and stabilizers regardless. Um, the hollow effect, that's just part of, you know, not having foam in here. There's going to be some cost cutting definitely, especially since this is a fully built keyboard. So that's just some of the things to, to keep in mind. Have to go, enjoyed the stream, hope to catch the next one. Thank you for being here, Phoenix. I hope you're in the next one. Drampion, same with you. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys for being here and the support. Hope to see you here next time. And uh, these keycaps, these keycaps turned out pretty nice. Um, the, the Cherry profile support seems to be decent. I'm not getting any binding on these guys. So I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. Um, since this is a north facing LED, so um, all in all, I have a fairly positive outlook over this and I would recommend it to those who are just wanting to dabble with modifying their keyboards and having a fully built out custom keyboard. I think it comes together quite nicely. So if anyone has questions about this, whether you're watching this later and the stream has ended, you can ask in the comments down below or um, you, know, you can message me on Discord and, and message in the, uh, in the chat channels there. I'll be open to hearing anyone's questions and answering them. So uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, hopefully we can get a couple more streams out to you guys. I have a lot of good videos coming out, especially with building my next wooden keyboard. I have the wood behind me. It's black walnut. So I'll see you guys next time. Have a happy Easter if you're watching this. And if you're watching this in a different time of year, happy whatever day it is of the week. <laughs>